Welcome back to another episode from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Doc Jen. And I'm Dr. Dom. And today we're talking about that forward head posture that everyone develops because of tech neck. Tech neck, either one, doesn't matter. We know what it's coming from and we're going to talk about what you can do about it today. All right, so hopping into a really popular and I think super relevant topic, tech neck or that nice forward head posture that we all get from sitting on our technology all day or text neck if we're just texting on our phone. So how can we start to address tech neck and all of the neck pains and back pains that come along with it? I know. I think we really got to start like, again, we just acknowledge that technology is a part of our world. And Mm -hmm. so rather than trying to run from something? How can we better incorporate it into our bodies and into our health? Mm -hmm. Because as we get into this forward head posture, like what naturally happens is that you're, it's not necessarily that, oh, my backgrounds and then this happens and then that happens. It could like, and that Mm -hmm. could be why your head's falling forward. But in general, when we're talking about tech neck and it's the technology in front of our eyes, it is natural and normal so you are a normal human for your gaze to or your head to follow your gaze that's just what happens right it's like (laughs) picture those kids when they're sitting at like preschool you know and they're really engaged in the story that's happening and they're just looking forward at the teacher and they're kind of leaning forward with their jaws open like it is natural for your gaze to follow your attention and that's okay but that just means that our head is doing that so how can we start to modify or you know, just change it throughout the day. Not to mention just that our our neck muscles, our back muscles, our and trunk muscles, you know, are connected with our eyes and our gaze. So if our gaze is going down at something, that's only going to be natural. But if our gaze is focused on something, on one point versus focus, not focused, but looking at something that's more of a broad expanse, like a sunset or a mountain or a big field, that is a sympathetic us looking at one thing, a focused vision which is more, you know, fight or flight. Our shoulders want to creep up towards our ears. It's going to be slightly more inflammatory phase versus that sunrise or sunset where we have a lot that our eyes can scan amongst. That's more parasympathetic or rest and digest or the, ah, you know, just that relaxing feel. Just looking at a sunset that can kind of flip our physiology. Exactly. And I think it's so important that we mention this with forward head posture because it's not just about the biomechanics, right? But Mm. it's actually what's happening in a deeper level. And it's so true. If you look at literally almost any photo that you can even find on the internet, it's like if people are sitting enjoying a sunset or standing, they're usually like upright, they're taking it all in their body. You don't, you're not thinking is my, is my chin tucked or my shoulder blades, you know, Mm -hmm. you're just, you're open, more alert, more relaxed where if you are in that sympathetic and kind of more like, oh my God, I got to get this done. Or what is that person saying? Or what is this email that's What's coming that through? What's that notification <laughs> popping up? Yeah. You, your body goes more into that fight, flight and, and tension. So a lot of times neck pain or forward head posture could be associated with pain. Not that it always is, but we just want to see, okay, we're not only going to talk about biomechanics in this one, but we're also going to talk about modifying how our central nervous system is responding as well. Yeah, and how and the different things we can put in our environment to make those impacts. So, I mean, first off, if we're talking forward head posture, there are different muscles involved. There are different muscles that kind of become the victim to sitting in this posture for an extended amount of time. When we have deep neck flexors that are super important for neck stabilization, that as we sit with this forward head posture, but they become really elongated and they kind of lose sense of what's going on. So they lose sense of how to balance up that overall neck support. Yeah. And then on the flip side of that, the muscles that kind of get shortened or tightened, shortened is usually what people think about. And that's really in the back of the neck, those neck extensors, they get really tight and small back there because think about it. If your head is going up and forward, you know, you're going to have tension build up. Think about tension headaches, all those. But the other muscle that gets really tight is as our head comes forward, this big SCM, this sternocleidomastoid, which is right on the side of the neck. And sometimes if you pinch it, you might notice like, oh, there is some tension going on there. I didn't realize how tight it is. So that muscle also gets pulled forward and kind of shortened. And when we say about shortened, it's not that the muscle doesn't have room to elongate or move through its normal range. It's just now that we've conditioned it kind of into the 
shortened <laughs> kind yeah. of phase like that's what the body starts to know that's what it starts to say like oh this is where we live now <laughs> just lacking that full range lacking that full control and it can contribute to building up tension or pain around the neck then we can't just say well if i release that tissue right that shortened yeah. tissue if i just press into it if i just get balls and i just push into it you know maybe for the moment you might feel some release of tension but what is that doing long term if we haven't adjusted anything that you do that actually puts you into that forward head posture right we're not doing anything or or if we're not addressing those muscles that kind of lack the control and lose that awareness in those deep neck yeah. flexors so that's why we want to start to say okay how can we just start to modify what we actually do within our body and what we have control of and mm -hmm. i think the first state that we need to focus on is actually the state of our body right and our gaze like we talked about and it goes into this single point focus it becomes more sympathetic so we need to develop practices that adjust and modulate us better to be able to drop into parasympathetic practices more so throughout the day yeah i mean although the releases and the massages and the tools that people use on us they feel nice and they might have some benefit or feel some benefit immediately after how long is it that we've been dealing with this issue if it is an issue if you're having pain how long have you noticed your head start to migrate forward or that you find yourself in this forward head position if this is something you've been dealing with for 20 30 years then we've really got to approach it that way that hey this is going to be a journey of working out of this not even working out of the position itself but learning how to support yourself within those symptoms that come up learning how to adjust like jen said the environment so that we can keep on typing in that new plan mm -hmm. and keep on teaching the brain, okay, here's how we can position slightly differently when we do this thing, like pick up our phone, which habitually my body just wants to go in this forward hunched position to look at. Like, so how can we start to give ourselves cues in our environment to make us start doing these things consistently? Yeah. And we're going to say it again, because you guys are just going to have to hear it over and over. One of the biggest tools that Dom and I use to really get us out of that sympathetic is breath. The breath. And that Episode helps 11. totally. And that helps with just the overall stress. Like we were mentioning the sympathetic parasympathetic. I mean, think about looking at a sunset. What do you want to do? Just a ah, nice long sigh versus, you know, looking at emails that you're trying to <laughs> respond to. You're probably not even breathing. So it's yeah. just like, what are we doing with our breath? What are we doing with that gaze? Those are two areas already that mm -hmm. we can start to address that might help with that posture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, you know, are there practices that you can incorporate taking you outside, changing that environment? So, again, changing the gaze, like we're not looking at a screen. We're not looking even if you're you're like, oh, I'm going to watch TV on my big screen. <laughs> That's still a single point gaze. I'm sorry. So getting yourself out of screens and out of that single point and focusing on one thing and allowing your body the ability to look and and kind of do this panoramic view. So not turning the head all over the place, but actually just like looking out and and taking it all in. That's really what kind of changes that gaze and changes that environment in our own body. Yeah, and I love doing this in the morning myself, you know, getting outside, taking some breaths in the morning. It's a great place to kind of set that state. But again, then if we go and sit down at a computer and sit at that tech all day long, what are we spending most of our time doing? So again, some people will be like, but I work a desk job, I have to be there. It's like, okay, well, if we have to be here, how can we change this immediate environment? Do I have a timer I can set to be like, oh, 30 minutes is up, that means I should do something different. Because mm -hmm. if it's just that reminder that helps us build more awareness consistently, trust me, you'll turn that timer off after like a week or a few days, because it'll become annoying. <laughs> and you'll just be like, okay, I now am realizing myself that when I sit for half an hour, something starts to go off inside that says, hey, move a little bit, otherwise your neck's gonna start to hurt. Right, exactly. So first we wanna change that state, modulate us better into not staying at that super stressed sympathetic, even if you might not feel stressed, your body is sensing it and tapping us into that parasympathetic. And then we really just want to, you know, kind of monitor our environment, which we've talked about a little bit before. But, you know, one thing that is, I think the first that comes to mind is if you are working at a desk job, making sure that your computer screen is directly in front of your gaze if you're just looking up, right? So you don't want to be looking down at any, like at the screen, because that just causes the head to kind of shift forward again, the head is going to follow the gaze. So if the head is, is at least up, and you can try to kind of mm -hmm. have your hips underneath you and your head on top of you, you have a better chance of at least maintaining it for a little bit. 
And if you're at a laptop, one of the ways to do this is to just place the whole laptop screen itself uh, or the whole laptop <laughs> at a little bit higher. So whether you're stacking books or something and then get an external keyboard and have the keyboard like making sure that your wrists are right in line with the elbows a little bit lower. And again, like, so we can adjust the screen itself or we can move our body and mm -hmm. we can, if we're sitting for most of the day, it's like, do we have a place? Are we working in our house that we can lay on our stomach for like 10 minutes while we work? I mean, that's just getting our whole upper back, thoracic spine, neck extending while we're working in itself. I mean, I know Jen was saying bringing the screen up to you, that can be so important because a lot of people just like to stand while they work. And so they'll stand at a desk that's way too low. Yeah. And then they'll be trying to look down at their computer the whole time. So again, if you want to stand, great, but then make sure you're at a counter or somewhere that you can raise that computer up for you. And then the other one is the phone. I think that gets talked about a lot in the videos that go kind of viral are like, make sure your shoulder blades are down and back and bring your elbows up and so that your hands are directly in front of you. And I'm like, who is holding that all day long? Like, yeah. please tell me. Your shoulders are gonna get tired. Maybe your hands go numb. <laughs> right. Like, it's just, it's not reality and i like talking into reality when we're when we're talking about clients too because what would i do i'm not going to tell someone to do something that's not reality so sometimes you know if you're going to be on your phone sitting down get into a comfortable position cross your arms or have a pillow kind of underneath your arms where you can prop your elbow comfortably on top of the other arm or on the pillow so you're not having to look down as much but you can comfortably kind of come up. So even if you were rounded back into the chair for a little bit and then bringing that arm on the chest and then your gaze would be directly in front of you. I mean, again, and like Dom said, can you lay on your stomach? Can you lay on your side? Can you go for a walk? You know, there's just, how can we mix up positions? We never want to be static and in one position all the time. That's only going to increase the stress that we have in the system. Which is where you're even hearing Jen and I say these things like, oh, prop your screen up, you know, prop your elbow up on something like these are just options. Yeah. <laughs> like same thing as the optimal body. There's no one optimal body. There's no one optimal position to work in. There's no one optimal position to look at your phone in. There's no one optimal position to lay on the couch in while you're on your phone. It's about moving amongst and through these and using them to be able to avoid static positions or constant positions for extended amount of times throughout the day. So the main thing is finding the ways to move or even if you have a couple mobility stretches or mobility exercises that you know are specific to you. I mean, me, if I get up and do one like upper back thing and one big neck retraction and extension thing every hour and sit back down, I'll feel so much better at the end of the day just doing that three or four times throughout the day than if I worked an hour at it in the morning. Totally. Some of my favorite are just going over to the wall and doing some of my favorite pec stretches. Mm -hmm. um, those just feel so amazing, especially if you are forward or working on people, if you're a clinician or anything like that, like anything that kind of stresses the chest forward and then getting that open mobility up and then doing some thoracic mobility and breath. Oh, like if I can continue with, and I need get to work on this myself, a little bit more as well. Like if okay. I can remember to do that more often, like I know I'm going to feel different within my body. So we already talked through our favorite exercise, which is basically our favorite exercise for everything, which is <laughs> breathing or more so um, coming to that core stability. Uh, and we like to do that through the breath. Um, other things we like to do, deep neck flexor. I kind of mentioned those deep neck flexors that get all stretched out doing deep neck flexor stability and endurance exercises, which we talked through this a little bit, I think in the headache episode. Um, basically what this looks like is laying on your back. We like to roll up a little towel and if you find the back kind of bump on your head, placing it just below that bump on your head at the very top of your neck, and you kind of just will lightly retract the chin to try and push back into those towels as you kind of Make sure you're feeling like you're lengthening to the top of that head. Hold for about five seconds and then relax. If you do that correctly three, four, five times, it might feel like a small insignificant movement, but you should start to feel a real deep like muscular engagement and burn deep in your neck. Mm -hmm. And this is so easy to just start. Like you can lay on the ground and do it. You can do it before you get out of bed. You can do it when you're sitting in your chair. You can do it when you're driving. And remember, it's not just like 
push your chin straight back. <laughs> it is it is that chin tuck which comes like back and down just a little bit so that the top of the head kind of comes up like you're someone's pulling you from a string and elongating you. And obviously there's different ways that you can manipulate that and make it harder. But if you just start working on it and putting your neck in a different position, that's essentially what we're doing and building back up that strength. It's so important. And then there's other stretches that I like to do. I don't like to become obsessive about the stretches at the neck because like I said, if the body is feeling tense and tight, just relieving that tension momentarily doesn't mean that it's going to last very long. So, I mean, things you can do just to help relieve in the moment is like kind of squeezing that SCM, that muscle that we talked about that kind of goes from like the back of the jaw area and down toward the, like the inside of the clavicle region. And if you just kind of gently pinch and move it, that's a good one. Um, and then we'll show some stretches that I've shown on Instagram before on YouTube. And then the other one is just for the stretching in the back of the neck. I mean, honestly, one of my favorite ones to do if I'm actually wanting to stretch and relax that area is either lying on the Intello roll mm -hmm. because it has those acupressure points along the so side. Nice. So good. Or even just laying on like the tune-up therapy balls, which we can link in the show notes. And then the last thing, remember, it's not just about mobility. <laughs> mobility is great. It's going to help you break up your day. It's going to help you feel better and move better. And we must be strengthening. So if you're just doing mobility, if you're just doing yoga in your life, these are great practices to down-regulate the body, to get it moving, to get it fluids going, but we must be strengthening. If you really wanna get out of that forward head posture and create strength within the body, it takes time, it takes diligence, it takes consistency. And that can look like so many different ways that you can strengthen the body, whether you're using body weight techniques and and loading at different angles or you're using weight, you know, both resistance training with bands, with weights, with anything, just it helps to build the body in general. So please don't forget about strengthening. Well, thanks for tuning in to another PT Pro from the Optimal Body Podcast. Hopefully you were paying a little more attention to how you were sitting while you were watching this and finding ways to change your environment to optimize the way you hold your neck. Comment below, subscribe, let us know what you want to hear in future pearls. 